Right, welcome ladies and gents. It would seem that Ms. Marvel has some of the lowest opening viewing numbers ever. Yes. Now, you guys would have seen my episode one review where I eloquently uh, said and titled that Ms. Marvel had given me cancer. Now, I didn't enjoy the first episode by any stretch of the imagination. I was never going to enjoy the first episode. Like, I'm aware. I watched the trailer. It's definitely not for me. Like, this movie's definitely not for me. Well, movie, series. Um, but I gave it a chance, I guess, at the very least, just to see. Uh, but it was impressively bad. Now, the viewing figures have come out, and it would indicate that a lot of people are as disinterested as possible. But it is funny that in those viewing figures, the actual demographics are listed, and, and, it, and it, well, it's just comical that in the effort to capture those demographics, they have done what everyone thought would happen, and... The other demographics have tuned out, and you get less bang for your buck. No one's interested in it. So let's take a look, because this is what I do here. We take a look at um, interesting things, I guess. Uh, but here we have it. Ms. Marvel reportedly opens to the lowest premiere viewership numbers of any Disney Plus Marvel series. Again, it's impressively bad. So anyway, Ms. Marvel is apparently struggling to embiggen itself with the hearts of viewers. Uh, as according to a new report, the young superheroine solo outing has opened to the lowest viewership numbers of any Disney plus Marvel Cinematic Universe tie-in shows. That is a mouthful and a half. Uh, but on June 17th, television data analytic Samba TV, uh, which uh, their data is aggregated from roughly... Um, you know, 24 smart TV brands from countries around the world, including LG, Sony, Sharp. Uh, they they come out and, and they do this. They track a lot of stuff and they'll come out periodically and just like reveal figures. Some of it's like, oh, look at this. Some of it's like, oh, Jesus. Um, so they do this and they've done it for every single show. So these are metrics. These are literally like for like metrics. Um, I guess the difference would be potentially people would got rid of a TV, but that's unlikely. Uh, because it just is. That's It's the States. I can't see anyone in the States realistically getting rid of a TV. You know, we're not... Ob obviously, ladies and gents, we're not talking about, you know, my van life um, people from California. That's not what we're talking about here. But anyway, they revealed that 775,000... That's right, yeah, not even a million. 775,000 households in the US watched the premiere episode of Ms. Marvel on Disney+. Plus. And just FYI, that's in its first five days. Because a lot of people will be like, well, that's open at night. No, first five days. First five days. That's impressively bad. Now, they say this. While less than uh, other MCU series, it was hit with Gen Z. Those people that don't buy anything. Why do you want to, why do you want to impress them? They don't buy anything. They have no money. They spaff it up at the wall on whatever flag you should be waving now or whatever ism you should be against now. They have no money. Why do you want... Why? Why do you want to impress them? They are the butt schasm of the world. They're awful. So, no issue with... Gen Z's, by the way, but, you know, we know exactly what kind of Gen Z they are trying to attract here. Uh, viewers aged 20 to 24 watched at the highest rate of any MCU show, uh, and it drew a more diverse audience with black, Hispanic, and Asian households watching at a higher rate. But again, ladies and gents, and, and this is the audience that they always wanted, you know, they wanted that young audience, that sort of young activist audience, the woke audience, or, or the more inclined to be woke anyway, uh, and the push for diversity and inclusion has left them with lowing, lower viewer figures. I mean, obviously, it, it is partially because it looks like garbage and a piece of crap. But it's that um, ideology, it's that sort of outlook, that mindset, which has resulted in the show being populated in the first place. So, if that's the push... And oh, bearing in mind as well, like, every, you know, every uh, male character is being swapped out for a female one... It's just, it's all over the place. So we know that they are trying to do this anyway. This show is like a culmination of that in one fell swoop where you can go, right, okay, well, th this is the result of that. What actually happens? Well, not many people bother to watch it. So there you go, Marvel. You got the audience you wanted. 
Round of applause. Idiots. Like people are people tune out to stuff like this. And and as well, as well. Just as an FYI, they're like, well, you know, more black people watched it, more Hispanic and more Asian. So there's not enough of those people that are actually interested in this show to make up for that drop. You know, because again, you know, black, Hispanic and Asian households clearly have more taste than to watch that. Apparently I need to make that clear. But anyway, unfortunately for Kamala Khan, these numbers leave Ms. Marvel with the worst such numbers for any MCU-related TV series, save possibly What If. So five-day data um, for its first episode has not been made publicly available uh, as recorded by Samba TV. So that's What If they haven't even bothered to release those numbers. So as per their insights, the premiere of Moon Knight, um, which was just prior, 1.8 million. So you can see why it's a bomb. Like, that's really bad. 1.8 million is good. Good numbers in its first five days. Good figures, right? Uh, and then before that, we had Hawkeye. 1.5 million. Double. Wow. Not bad. Not bad. Loki. Uh, that was 2.5 million. Do you see how it's just progressively getting worse and people are progressively tuning out uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier 1.8 yeah funny that isn't it uh, again impressively bad impressively bad now this article uh, from Banning in the Comic says offered a choice between watching a series centered on a relatively new character whose history is marred in controversy and whose stories have only declined in quality since her debut, or one focused on cultural icons whose character and story, at least prior to Disney's subversions, have inspired fans for 45 years. It's not hard to imagine that most viewers would choose the latter. Yeah. Uh, again, so impressively bad figures. Impressively bad. Uh, people being in, you know, interested, and th this is the future of the MCU, I guess. Like, this is what they want. This is the audience that they wanted to capture. Nonsense, absolute nonsense. They're not interested. Gen Z have no money. They're not interested. Also, ladies and gentlemen, consider checking out my Teespring store. Supporting the channel via this way does go a long way. But also, not only that, you do get to wear some awesome merch. These are one of a kind designs designed for me by my graphic designer. We of course have our clown world line which is uh, in mugs hoodies t-shirts we've got space jeebus uh, and then for something a little bit different we of course have right down at the bottom right here we have our pulsar gtir also ladies and gentlemen consider checking out and supporting my second channel which is car nonsense this is a vlog and car channel you can find links to this in the description box along with my teespring please do consider supporting